My name's Guy Kestevan. I've been a professional biking kit tester for nearly 25 years. And today, this is the tech talk around on the latest Santa Cruz Hightower V3. So typically after being dry all day, it started raining now. Let's get through the basics really quickly. Uh, version three, it's still 29 at both ends and the suspension travel hasn't changed either. You've got 145 mil at the rear and you've got 150 mil at the front. This is the top spec carbon CC, so it's the best quality uh, carbon frame. They do a carbon C as well, uh, but this is 200 grams lighter uh, for the same stiffness and the same strength as that frame. And in this case, that is a lot of strength. Santa Cruz have a lifetime, no questions asked warranty across all their frames, and they also match that up on their reserve carbon wheels, which this bike gets the standard, and on the bearings in their VPP linkage. Now, moving in here, you probably can't tell uh, unless you've got it back to back with other bikes, but the major change, while the travel is the same, is that this new version of the VPP uses smaller pivot axles, smaller bearings. So that's similar to the old, old tall boy, although they are actually slightly strengthened up from that shorter travel bike. This means they can move the linkages closer to the bottom bracket, which has two advantages. It means that on the smallest size, you can get the back end right in. So uh, there's a three mil difference in effective chainstay length on all the different bike sizes to keep it really proportional in terms of overall geometry. But significantly for the suspension, it means that it's both more linear and more progressive in terms of the shock rate. And on all the CC models, you get the fantastic new RockShox Super Deluxe Ultimate piggyback shock. As you can see, this comes with a climb switch, but also high-speed compression damping and low-speed compression damping as standard, and then low-speed rebound adjust on this collar around the front. And I have to say that while I've used this shock in several bikes now, the high tower is definitely its finest hour yet. This suspension system and this shock together feel absolutely fantastic i mean make sure you watch the uh, live ride review i did on this bike at the ardrock enduro for full details on this but basically it's just it's more sensitive more supportive it's all the more things that you want right through the stroke this really is a beautifully balanced back end and because it's so well balanced that means each click i mean you've only got four clicks of high speed compression or four clicks of low speed compression on that side but each one gives a distinctly different character in terms of support in terms of sensitivity in terms of how it pushes through the stroke and it's not like one's really good and the others aren't as good it's they're all brilliant but just in slightly different ways it really is a fantastic showcase of the shock and vice versa on the bike the other major change for the v3 high tower is what Santa Cruz call the glove box. Obviously, they're not the first company to introduce internal storage, but they've done a particularly beautiful job of it. For a start, that really big, almost e-bike sized down tube gives tons of volume inside that down tube, but also they've just engineered it beautifully. You've got this metal catch, and it's a really tight hermetic seal. I mean, I don't think it's waterproof, but it certainly feels really, really nicely put together. And then you've got particularly nice purse and uh, for your tube or a tool wallet, whatever you want to call it, inside with really nice neoprene fabric and chunky zips on there and those little organizer pockets as well. I mean, that door alone with the metal clip weighs 86 grams. They really have thought through the quality on that, but it's just part of the reason why this bike feels so damn special. Just not just to ride, but also to own. It comes in two colour choices. You've got this, you know, relatively reserved uh, green and orange here, but then there's an amazing translucent kind of burgundy where they've deliberately loaded the paint thicker onto the high stress areas of the frame and then let that uh, top quality base carbon show through in the rest of the frame. And then if we move around to the off side of the frame, you can see those smaller pivot diameters there, again, giving more space dropping everything closer into the BB, as I said. You've also got a little window there in uh, the straddle, uh, in the part of the frame that straddles the rear shock, 
which means you can actually see the sag ring when you're adjusting sags. That makes it a lot easier to set up. And on the back, you can see there, you've got a little eccentric mount. So you can change the uh, geometry of the bike by half a degree just by flipping that around. Plus, right down nestling in the bottom there, you've got a grease injection point. You can pump the bearings full of fresh grease uh, without dismantling the whole bearing. I mean, you can do it. They are still self-serviceable collet bearings, but if you just want to lube it up in the meantime, then uh, that's where you attach your uh, grease injector. And I don't think anyone still does that on any other bike, but it's just a really nice longevity touch. And you can see there's a chunky plastic fender over the top of the shock, stopping it getting dirty. And that super deluxe shock also has a really big oversized bearing on the bottom end for maximum smoothness. To be honest, it almost feels too sensitive when you start riding it. But when you just start pattering over those bumps and gluing down when you really, really need the traction, that's, you know, it's just one of the many areas where this bike really does excel. I mean, it's a superlative special. I can't defend the price. It is ridiculously expensive. And there are some brilliant bikes out there for literally half the price. But this is properly next level. I mean, it was already a brilliant bike, this high tower, but this this properly takes it up an extra notch and currently i'm going to stick my neck out and say it's unmatched in terms of an absolute premium all-round trail bike other bits of detailing include these little blister ports for the cables or hoses obviously this one's got one blanked off because it's an axis wireless bike but they link into fully plumbed internal cable routing so whatever you feed in through the front of the frame just comes neatly out wherever you want it than the mainframe and then into the rear swing arm pops out just ahead of the brake there and from another longevity move it's great to see santa cruz still rocking the threaded bottom bracket they hung on in there when pretty much everyone else was going to press fit saying it was stiffer saying it was just as reliable and i guess they're feeling pretty smug now everyone is crawling back to uh, threaded bottom brackets as standard and while we're down here you can see that little uh, orange internal graphic treatment, just a really nice touch because if you come up again to the top tube, you can see it's just reversed out there around the logo. And as well as that extended lifetime warranty, you've also got some really nice replaceable protection pieces as well. You've got a tailgate guard there. You've got a really big belly guard to, uh, well, if, if you sump it out or a log or a rock you're trying to clear and fail or just something flies off the uh, front wheel, you've then got really nice wrap around ridged chain slap protection there. And the underside of this rear swing arm gets protection from the uh, flapping chain as well. Comes with a 32 chain ring as standard, but it will take a 34 if you've got the muscles to crank it. And if you're wondering about weight of this Carbon CC model, a medium frame with all the fixtures and the shock comes in just over three kilos. Uh, that's without the bag inside, but with the hatch on. And uh, so that's not a bad weight at all. I mean, it's slightly heavier uh, than the old bike, just because of things like that hatch on there. But just because of things like that hatch on there and the reinforcement around that to make that work. But it's still, you know, this complete bike weighs 14.2 kilos. So again, a decent weight for such a tough mid-travel trail bike. So that's the frame construction features. What about the geometry? Again, there are some slight but subtle changes over the V2 model. Head angle is slacker by half a degree. So it's now 64.5 or 64.8, depending on where you have that shock chip. Reach is very slightly longer, 475 or 472 on this large compared to 473, 470 on the old bike. And the rear chainstay length is 437 mil on this bike. So, and like I say, that changes proportionate with every size. So it's a three mil jump up from small right through to XL and XXL. In terms of bottom bracket height, you've got a 31 or 34 millimeter bottom bracket drop and that equates to 342 or 338 above the ground. So nothing crazy radical, but you know, enough space to keep those 175 mil carbon cranks going around without ruining them on rocks too regularly. And finally, effective seat angle is 0.1 of a degree steeper. So it's 
76.6 or 76.9 degrees now. And they've also modified the bottom end of the seat post slightly, so there's no longer clearance for a coil shock. As you can see, it's slightly slimmed down in what they used to call the pizza oven, but that means you can get a longer drop feet seat post fitted as standard. So that's frame features and geometry done. What about the specification itself on this top model? As you'd expect from an X01 axis bike, the majority of it is X01 axis. Rear mech, crank and rear cassette, all from the X01 group. And I'm pleased to say, although SRAM won't probably thank me for this, it's got a 10 to 50 tooth rear cassette on there. Because frankly, I found a 52 a bit too easy, a bit too low. Uh, I'd run out of speed on technical climbs, I haven't quite got the kick to climb up stuff. And with a bike as pedal positive as this, it really helps having that slightly closer match gear ratio. So you've still got some grunt and some torque to put against the hill when you really need to. The only outlier from that X01 group is up here on the bars, where you have a GX shifter, not an X01. To be honest, there's zero functional difference, but you know, if you're paying over nine and a half thousand pounds, it's a bit, bit of a poke in the eye, not getting the full spec shifter on there. Brakes, much happier situation. You've got SRAM's code RSC levers up here. And interestingly, and again, it's something I fully support, they've only used a 180 mil rotor on the front. So kind of default is to use 200 on the front, 180 on the rear on an aggressive bike, but more and more, I'm actually finding a slightly smaller rotor means less fork dive, less geometry disturbance, and just a better kind of overall dynamic balance. And also, in, more, in slippery conditions, it's a more subtle result as well. But to be fair, you don't really have to worry much about traction on the front end of this bike because you're getting Mini DHR2, so you've got the downhill rear tyre on the front, which gives you, because the knob arrangement, loads of braking surface on the front end of those scoops, and a decent roll, uh, not as good as something like a DHF, so it is a slower choice, and obviously that max grip compound slows it down as well, but in terms of cornering grip, having that up front is really, really significant. And it's matched with Reserve HD rims, so the newer heavy-duty heavy version of Santa Cruz's, like I say, lifetime warranted carbon rims. And the other great reserve innovation on this bike are these Fillmore valves. I really need to do a separate video on these because I can't describe how much of a game changer it is having a valve on a wheel where you get genuinely high flow and you don't have to worry about sealant clogging or anything like that. It's just super easy for switching tires and all sorts of things. Just that, you know, it's a completely different design, but and they are very expensive aftermarket, I think they're 45 quid a pair, but I would not hesitate uh, to buy a set for my own wheels, especially if I was changing uh, valve, especially if I was changing tires regularly. One small complaint I have about the wheels uh, at this price point is you get the Industry 9 1.1 hubs on here, which are still a great hub. I've got a lot of long-term use on them, but while it doesn't matter so much at the front, at the rear, that means a slightly slower four degree pickup on the cassette compared to the ultra immediate 0.5 degree pickup on the Hydra Hub. So again, a little bit of a disappointment in terms of uh, drive if you're looking at this as a flagship bike, but that's always something you can take up with your Santa Cruz dealer and see if they'll switch it out for the version of the reserves that comes with a Hydra Hub for a little bit of extra cost. And the other slightly odd thing about this, which I, I mean, it depends where you're looking at it from. Although this is, you know, an all-rounder trail bike, it is, you know, with a piggyback shock on there and slacker angles and just a kind of a burlier build overall, especially with the uh, Reserve 30HD rather than 30SL wheels. So that's a hundred, they're a hundred gram lighter, sort of more trail trail wheel. I'm surprised They've only gone with XO protection for the rear carcass. They haven't gone for XO plus. I mean, to be fair, I did get through all the way around uh, Ard Rock Enduro, smashed and slashed it through a bunch of rocks, and it was fine. But I was constantly aware that I had the lighter weight carcass on there, and personally, I'd probably put an XO plus on there 
and maybe an insert as well because otherwise this bike is just screaming for absolute flat out speed everywhere on the plus side it is a slightly lighter tire and i guess that makes the whole back end more responsive in terms of reaction to whatever wattage you can put through that chain and also very very slightly in terms of unsprung to sprung weight in terms of suspension sensitivity and then moving up to the cockpit you've got santa cruz grips you've got their own carbon fiber 800 mil 35 mil riser bar which has a lovely feel and shape to it one of my favorite carbon bars on any brand of bike you've got a bergtech stem 42 mil stem so that works really really well with the steering again you know it is the 3d uh it is the 3d forged version rather than the top end uh, machined version but to be honest, in terms of structural cost-effective strength, that's the one I'd probably go for anyway. And then moving back to the seating area, you've got WTB saddle, and you've got RockShox Reverb, 175 mil stroke dropper post. Again, hydraulic dropper on a bike that's otherwise fully loaded with uh, super kind of longevity conscious features. Not so sure, and you know, you could have maybe argued that a uh, Kashima post from Fox would have been a better match cosmetically, but so far this post has worked great. And it is when it is working great, it is a lovely smooth operator. And I don't know many people whose uh, asses disagree with a WTB saddle. And uh, yeah, sorry, that's just made me realize I completely forgot to talk about the fork. Box 36, grip two. Uh, if you've watched my video where this faces off against the Lyric, then you'll know I regard this as the current benchmark for all aggressive trail enduro forks. Again, just a beautiful balance of suppleness, mid-stroke control, big hit capability, uh, really friendly fork to tune. Uh, there's loads of depth in terms of being able to adjust the low and high speed adjustment if you want to on both compression and on rebound. But unlike older fox it's still really forgiving of just a basic sort of sag setup and as you can see the back of the fork also features these little pressure relief valves there which uh, i have to say i don't think i'll ever bother using them in the uk unless there's uh, some particular height or temperature fluctuations or my barometer's going off the charts but if you're doing long uh if you're doing really long punishing runs you might find them useful to uh, bleed the any air that's escaped into the lowers back out again and you get a fender as well although yet again at least that's one slightly wider than the rock shocks one but it's still not a massive amount of use in really filthy uk conditions so there you go that's the tech talk round on this absolute flagship and like i say i genuinely think this is the new benchmark for all-round aggressive trail use if you're lucky enough to be able to afford it. And I must admit, I'm referring there to the frame and the shock and the majority of the components. Uh, I mean, certainly from a suspension point of view, that shock and that fork are pretty much, like the frame, absolutely top of the game. And it's worth, you know, it's always worth factoring in not only that no questions asked warranty on the frame, on the bearings and on the wheels, but also factor in the fact that A, Santa Cruz dealers tend to be amongst the best around in terms of service and knowledge. And Santa Cruz contribute a huge amount of money to all sorts of trail building and advocacy and basically, you know, really worthwhile mountain bike organisations. So although you are definitely paying a premium compared to some other bikes that come within a few percentile in terms of absolute performance, you're getting some really important add-ons on a personal sort of long-term basis and also on a community support basis. But like I say, I do think there are some spec niggles on this bike, you know, in terms of the rear tire, the post choice and the shifter, maybe stem as well. Although to be honest, they've all worked flawlessly on this bike. Those are items I'd maybe change if it was my personal bike. But, you know, the uh, range rolls all the way down to, what am I saying, all the way down? The range is still bloody expensive where it starts, let's be honest, at just under six grand, and that's for an NX bike with the Carbon C chassis. And it's also, it's also worth noting 
but while they're still in stock, the Hightower V2 with this spec is not only 600 grams lighter, but it's also a thousand pounds cheaper. And considering the changes on this bike are only very small, I mean, they're significant. If you're a proper ride quality sniffing princess like I am, or you really, really know your bikes, you'll definitely be able to tell when you ride the two back to back. But that V2 is still a brilliant bike. So that uh, if you can snap, if you can get one of the last ones remaining, then that's still an absolutely awesome bike and a relative bargain as well. But while there are some really nice technical details, which I've hopefully explained for you here and what their advantages are on the trail, nothing compares to actually seeing this bike in action and hopefully getting some experience of what it's like to ride. So please make sure you watch my live ride video that I was that the guys at Hard Rock Enduro were kind enough to let me shoot at the event. Plus, massive thanks to Zero Cycling UK who support the channel, to PT's products and Crud XL Fenders as well. Thanks to Santa Cruz and the UK for letting me have this bike on loan. The more I ride it, the more it just continues to impress me in so many different ways. It really is an absolutely superlative all-round machine. Uh, I mean, I think the review I wrote for Bike Perfect, which I'll put a link in the uh, comments below, is not only one of the longest reviews I've ever written on a bike, but possibly the most outrageously, unapologetically uh, superlative pact. I think I even described it as transcendent at some points. And I'm not sorry about that. This bike, if you can afford it, really, really is something truly special. It really does feel like you've treated yourself to something exceptional, whether that's from just the uh, click of that glove box compartment through to that incredible sensitivity yet support of that rear, rear end, uh, whether you're clawing for traction up a climb, ripping round a turn, or just hammering through serious trouble with just zero shits given, to be honest. This, uh, I'm saying it all over again, the bike is brilliant. So, uh, the other people who are brilliant are my Patreon sponsors who support the channel on a, with a small monthly pledge and the names of the investors are scrolling up here and they get early, extended and behind the scenes full length reviews as a thank you and they get all that content ad free. So if you really like what I'm doing with the channel then please consider supporting me on Patreon. Otherwise, if you've not clicked for subscriptions, please do that now. Click for notifications so you know when the next videos come up. We've got some more Santa Cruises coming up very shortly, uh, ones you probably know about already, and some you can probably guess where they're going next. But all that will be revealed in time. Plus, I'm going to bulk it up with more component and kit reviews in the meantime. But for now, I've been Guy Kestevan on Guy Kez TV, tech talking you through the brand new. Santa Cruz Hightower V3.